Greetings, brothers and sisters. Greetings to you all in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, who commissioned the servant of God and his poor Moaj of Africa in these latter days to preach the gospel of the preciousness of the name of Jesus Christ and the awe of his salvation in these latter days. My name is Tari Rai. I worship in the African Apostolic Church at Watford Parish. The evangelist is Tunduwani, Reverend Kavai, Bishop Nteta. I thank God for this platform that we are able to utilize in these times, in these trying times. Some of us have been in a lockdown or quarantine or isolation for a longer period than others. I pray that God is with you all. God is comforting you, giving you hope, putting food on your tables and ensuring that no harm comes your way, no stress, no sorrow. Some have feared that this might be signs of the end of the world, but I tell you, such a fear should not be a part of you as a Christian. No, such a fear should not be a part of you as a Christian because the fear of the end of the world should be no different to the fear of dying tomorrow. No. And these are not the reasons why we come to seek God. These are not the reasons why we seek his face. We've learned from our brothers in South Africa, Evangelist Colongo and Bishop T. Mwaja, who were teaching about the cleansing of the heart, and minding what we bring into our spirits and what we breathe out and reflect into the world from our spirits. Bishop T. is teaching us about the message of hope and how we should not worry of what we shall eat, what we shall wear, and how we should remain faithful in God. The message was emphasized, therefore, on Tuesday by Evangelist Mereri in East Timor, who was teaching about trust and obedience and the consequences of lacking trust and obedience. I thank God who has given us this opportunity to discuss this word. I want to start off by reading the scripture from, I, from the book of Isaiah. But today I want us to focus on the love of God and how it was made manifest because Jesus Christ himself is the manifestation of the love of God. He is the embodiment of the humility of God. Because when we say Jesus Christ, we don't only mean the spirit of God that dwelleth in him, but we mean the flesh and the blood that he wore. Yes, indeed I say so. Because when we say Jesus, we mean that flesh and blood that was born from the virgin from a virgin womb. We mean that flesh and blood that died for us. We mean that very same flesh and blood that offered itself to us. We mean that very same flesh and blood that was kept pure for generations from Abraham to Joseph kept pure all through Jesus' life as well. God made sure to abide with the children of Israel, preparing for generations. Because between Abraham and, and Jesus is the generation from Isaac to Joseph. All these together make 40 generations, which symbolize the 40 days of preparation for the sacrifice of the lamb in the day of the Passover. Now I want you to understand how great the sacrifice that was made by Jesus Christ is and what it symbolizes. For the love was not in vain, but the love was pure, unconditional, and that very same love manifested itself. And he also gave us a duty us who believe in him, us who come to him, not only to, to have salvation, 
Not only to have eternal life, but to be called Christians, to be called by his name. For us to understand the preciousness of the name of Jesus Christ, I want you to understand what it means to be Christian. And we shall understand this by, by how we understand the love that he showed on the journey to the cross and the value of it. But I shall first read from Isaiah chapter 53. Who hath believed our report? And to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant and as a root out of a dry ground. He hath no form, no comeliness. And when we shall see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. He is despised and rejected of men a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And we hid as it were our faces from him. He was despised and we esteemed him not. Surely he hath borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes, we are healed. All we, like sheep, have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way. And the Lord hath laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. He is brought as a lamb to the slaughter, and as a sheep before his shearers is dumb. So he openeth not his mouth. He was taken from prison and from judgment. And who shall declare his generation? For he was cut off out of the land of the living. For the transgression of my people was he stricken. And he made his grave with the wicked and with the rich in his death. Because he had done no violence, neither was any deceit in his mouth. Yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. He hath put him to grief. When thou shalt make his soul an offering for sin, he shall see his seed. He shall prolong his days, and the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. He shall see of the travail of his soul and shall be satisfied. By his knowledge shall my righteous servant justify many. For he shall bear their iniquities. Therefore will I divide him a portion with the great, and he shall divide the spoil with the strong. Because he hath poured out his soul unto death, and he was numbered with the transgressors. And he bare the sin of many, and made intercession for the transgressors. Alleluia. Alleluia. Praise the Lord. Glory be unto him who sitteth upon the throne. Glory unto him forever and ever. Because this is how the book was opened. The book that was sealed with seven seals that we read in the book of Revelations chapter 5. This is how it was opened because there was only one from the tribe of Judah. Only one lion from the tribe of Judah. One king from the root of David. One. This is Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. When we say seek ye the kingdom of God and his righteousness, we say seek the reign of God. And when we say seek the reign of God, we are saying accept Jesus Christ as Lord. And when we're saying seek his righteousness, we are saying accept his salvation. Accept that only he can save you. Only he has the power to make you righteous because he is the Lord, our righteousness. The message of the cross is to them that perish foolishness. But to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. This is how we overcome the world, just as he overcame the world. By journeying to the cross, dying on our behalf, dying for our sake. Because John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. Alleluia. This is the day that we remember that sacrifice. 
This is the day that we remember what it took. The journey to the cross. Because we ourselves, like it says on Matthew chapter 24, from Matthew chapter tw- chapter 16, sorry, from verse 24. Matthew 16 verse 24 says, Then said Jesus unto his disciples, If any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. But I want you to understand what, what the value of that is. The journey to the cross. Because why do we, do we have to deny ourselves and take up the cross? Because Jesus Christ denied himself. He did not live according to his will. If he decided, he could have lived according to his own will. And thought, forget the will of God. But if he forgot the will of God, there would be no salvation for you and I. Now you have a purpose. God, God made it so that you have a purpose. He created you for his sake, for his will. <laughs> to all those that believed on Jesus Christ, to them gave he power. John 1 verse 12. And to all those that believed on his name, to them gave he power to become the sons of God. Meaning that it is possible to reflect Jesus Christ. You're supposed to reflect Jesus Christ. But how do we reflect Jesus Christ? The main element that helps us to reflect Jesus Christ is love. Open your books in John chapter 15. From verse 9. I want you to read John 15 from verse 9. As the Father hath loved me, so have I loved you. Continue ye in my love, Jesus was saying. In my love. Not your love, not anybody else's love. Jesus' love. In my love. Because we know the commandment. The commandment was saying, love God with all your mind, all your heart, all your soul, all your strength. This was a reiteration of the commandment that was given unto Moses in Deuteronomy. Yes. But how long was God loving Making, making sure that the blood remained pure to the point of sacrifice. From Abraham to Jesus Christ, he was making sure that the blood remained pure. Isaac, Jacob, who was later named Israel, Judah, and all the descendants, all the way down unto Joseph. God was making sure that the blood remained pure. Forty generations 40 generations, 40 generations, God suffered long, ensuring that the same blood that was to be poured out for your sake upon that cross remained pure. So the journey to the cross started at the moment that Isaac was replaced by the ram. But the love did not begin then. The love began even before the creation of the world. But the journey to the cross, the preparation, began then. And the blood and the flesh, God suffered long. Yes. And then when the body came, the body came, God ensured that the people knew this is the son of sacrifice. Behold, my son, in whom I am well pleased. So he says, continue in his love. What is the nature of his love? How do we love like Jesus Christ? Because we know, he said, he said the commandments, the ten commandments, are telling us also to love your neighbor as you love yourself. But this is a different kind of love than, than, the, than the love that Jesus Christ was telling us of. What is the love that Jesus, because he said, he called it his love, his love. This is the way he loved, the nature of his love. What is the nature of Jesus' love? Because if we want to be Christians, we have to be like Christ, like Christ. Because the Bible says, when he shall appear, we shall appear with him in glory. So how do we appear with him in glory? We want it so that when people can see us, they see Jesus. We want it so that when people can hear us, they hear Jesus. We want it so that when people know us, they know Jesus. Even in spirit. Because the power that is, that is exuding through us 
is the power of Jesus Christ because we don't preach in just words alone. Because the kingdom of God is not in word but in power. But we also preach with the demonstration of spirit and power. Love unites, not divide. Love gives hope, not doubt, not fear. Love gives faith, not doubt. Love. What is the nature of his love? If ye keep my commandments, ye shall abide in my love. We shall abide in his love. Even as I have kept my father's commandments and abide in his love. These things have I spoken unto you that my joy, my joy might remain in you and that your joy might be full. We should be joyous. We should be joyous when it comes, when an alarm is rang that saying Jesus is coming. But if you find yourself panicking, saying, Jesus is coming, am I ready? <laughs> Question yourself. How is your relationship with God? This is the time that you are being given to ensure that you pray without ceasing. What is prayer? Not kneeling down, surely not. Prayer is the connection you have with God. So long as you are connected with God, you are in prayer. It's a consistent prayer. This is how you worship God in spirit and in truth. And I want to meet you in spirit and in truth, brothers and sisters. Wherever we are, we should be together in spirit and in truth. Hallelujah. Yes, this is my commandment. Let us hear. If we love him, we keep his commandment. This is my commandment, that ye love one another as I have loved you, as I have loved you. He loved us a certain way. We Remember, he spoke about my love. He said, abide in my love. Continue in my love. He, he keeps talking about his love. Now, what is the nature of his love? Let us continue reading. On John 15, verse 13 now. Greater love, this is now, he's now talking about love, his nature of love, the nature of his love, because we know Jesus Christ himself is the manifestation of the love of God. What is the nature of his love? (laughs) Greater love hath no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. And what then does he say to you? Ye are my friends, if ye do whatsoever I command you. So what then do we understand that he has just commanded us to do? (laughs) What did he just command us to do? Huh? What did he command us to do? He commanded us to love one another as he loved us. And, And what is the nature of his love again? Greater love hath no man than this, that a man should die. For his friends. Hallelujah. Are you prepared. To do such a thing. Because when we say the preciousness. Of the name of Jesus Christ. If such a love is not in you. Brother. If such a love is not in you. You're not Christian. The name of Jesus Christ is too precious. To call you a Christian. Too precious for you. Because God suffered 40 generations to make it possible that some people who live according to the love of Jesus Christ will be called Christians. Are you at the same love that is prepared to die for the gospel, to die for your other, for your brethren? Because when people hear the word death, they, they, they think, oh, no, 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 you're speaking too deep. You don't have to go that extreme. No. <laughs> But I tell you, Christianity is that extreme, naturally, because that's how extreme Jesus, Jesus Christ died. He died. He didn't, he didn't just come on earth and gave a blessing, then departed. No, he died. Then he rose again and his rising again was an, was an overcoming of the world for your sake. Hallelujah. I want you to understand how precious it is to be called a Christian, to walk with the name of Jesus Christ and say, I am known as a Christian because you are a representative of Jesus when that is the case. I want you to understand that. Do you deserve it? Do you? Are you walking with love that unites, not divides? Are you walking with love that is pure? 
Because you have to continue in the love of Jesus. If we're saying continue, God suffered 40 generations. Now, are you continuing that same suffering, the purity that God was keeping? Because God is saying, we forget about your sins. We forget about your, your, your defiled soul. We forget about that. Now we renew you. We make you a new creature. But now you live on behalf of Jesus Christ. You declare his generation. You declare his generation. Because he was cut off from the land of the living. You declare his generation. When you live for Jesus, you live like Jesus. To the point that people in spirit would think, you must be Jesus because I cannot identify anyone who has that resemblance, that reflection, that light, that love, except Jesus Christ. Paul Marge of Africa is reflecting Jesus. Are you? Peter reflected Jesus and Cornelius bowed down to him thinking that he was Jesus. Paul and Barnabas reflected Jesus and the, and the people bowed down to them thinking they were gods. But what's happening for you, brethren? This is the sacrifice. This is the value of it. This is how powerful it is. The love of God. The death of Jesus Christ upon the cross for your sake to purify you. Now walk in that purity. Pick up your cross. Deny yourself and follow Jesus. And if you're already in the way, remember, endure till the end. Trust and obey. Remain faithful. Remember the cross and what it means. Remember how long God suffered for your sake. Ensuring the blood remained pure. Remember, only there was only one flesh and one blood that was given out for you. Only one body. No other. When we say Jesus, we mean that flesh and blood. God bless the teaching of his word, now and forevermore. Amen. Farewell, brothers. I see you in spirit. I believe and hope I do. In the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, God bless you all.